family, it's Chacha and this is my kitchen. This week I'm going to show you how to make um, appetizers, chicken empanadas. I'm sharing with you a family recipe of mine. It is something that is near and dear to my heart because my mom actually showed me how to make these empanadas. She's no longer with me, however, every time I make this dish, it feels as though she's uh, standing over me right there. So I remember when I was younger, my mother, she always had me as part of the production line making these empanadas along with my grandmother and my sisters and whoever else that she could grab, my aunts, etc. cetera. Uh, so it was definitely a family affair. Um, and this being the holiday seasons, what better time than to share a family dish with you all and so let's get started let's do this thing let's do it let's do it chicken empanadas chicken empanadas chicken. during the holidays I like to spend my time wisely with my friends and family and, and just enjoying their company so the least amount of time I could spend in the kitchen the better so uh, one of my shortcuts that I like to do is to utilize the uh, pre-made dough you can cut time uh, by using this pre-packaged dough if you can't find it in your local supermarket then I highly recommend that maybe you check some of the ethnic supermarkets within your area a lot of times whether it be an Asian market or a Latin uh, market Market, you may find these pre-packaged banana disc uh, to make your um, to make your empanadas, your chicken empanadas. Now, the other items that you're going to be utilizing, of course, is going to be chicken. Now, this is chicken thighs. Because chicken thighs tend to be a bit juicier uh, compared to the chicken breast, which tends to dry out. The other ingredients that we're going to utilize are onions, red pepper, green pepper, a bit of garlic, and here we have Spanish olives, and then our seasoning consists of salt, pepper, and paprika. Another way to save time is by purchasing a chicken that has been deboned and is skinless, so you don't have to worry about cutting those parts off uh, during this prep process. Um, but now we're gonna move on to the peppers. Now the peppers, because I only am using four thighs, I'm only really gonna use about a third of the pepper. So what you wanna do is you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to cut the, um, just cut part of the pepper down and take out any seeds as well as this middle portion uh, that tends to be a bit spongy. You're not going to be eating any of that part, so you want to uh, carefully remove that. Um, and once you have removed that, what we're going to do is we're going to chop this. But what I like to do first is I like to cut strips down uh, the the um, in a vertical form down the pepper and I try to keep the goal is to keep these ingredients the peppers the onions um, even the uh, the the green olives try to keep them uniformed in size so that when you are biting into that empanada you're getting a little bit of each and every one of those ingredients so here I've cut them into strips and then from there I'm going to dice them Go up and down, up and down. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the green pepper. I cut it into long strips, and then from here, what you wanna do is you want to dice them as well. And you just want e equal amounts of green pepper, red pepper. And then, so the next step is the onion. Now, a couple of tricks with the onion. For one, you want to get rid of this outer layer. Uh, the onion is in, actually, is in layers. Uh, so this outer layer you can access by chopping off the tip of the onion. Okay, so here we have um, what I call either the Mexican flag or the Italian flag where you have the red, the green, and the white. Um, whew, that onion, Lord have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> My apologies. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so that onion was not agreeing with me. Forget about what I said regarding the end point of it. Um, definitely made my eyes water. All right, so I am back and refreshed. Um, so far we have our red peppers, our green peppers and onions. Um, and then the next step is chopping up your olives. Now the other piece, like I said, it's optional, uh, but you may want to add is the garlic and that you can mince as well. So here we have it. We have our, have our red peppers, our green peppers, our onions, our olives, and one little garlic clove, not too much. All right, so the next step is seasoning our 
our chicken. Now for this one, uh, be cautious with how much salt that you use. Now I say be cautious because at the same time, the olives are a bit salty or not too salty, but that's another added element that has salt to it. So you don't, you want to be very cautious as to how much salt you add in general to uh, the chicken. So here I just put in a bit of pepper and then the last piece is the paprika. So once you have your meat seasoned, uh, you just want to rub that seasoning in there really good. Just massage it so that it's on both the bottom and top side, evenly distributed. Don't forget to wash your hands after you've been kneeling with poultry. Make sure to wash it with soap and water. Don't cross contaminate your products. So now let's start that cooking process. Now you want to heat the pan up to cook your chicken with a little bit of oil. I'm going to cook it um, on both sides roughly for five to seven minutes and then from there once it is cooked I'm going to take it out of the pan and I'm going to let it cool on my cutting board and then I'll begin the uh, chopping process of so chopping the, my meat down to uh, nice good chunks um, that are a little bit bigger than the chunks of the um, other vegetable items that I've chopped. Now that we have chopped our meat, I'm going to place it back into that same pan. Don't get rid of the flavor in that pan. You want all those nice bits of seasoning that was left when you cooked the chicken initially. You want to keep it in there because some of the moisture from the chicken that you just put back plus the vegetables that we're going to incorporate, that's going to lift up a lot of the flavor that was left in the pan initially. And so now that those ingredients are in the pan, you just want to give it a quick stir. You're not going to cook it for too long, just enough so that any chicken pieces that were raw, um, you can cook it to the point where it is fully cooked. And some of the vegetables that you have in there, cook it lightly so that when you're biting into the empanada, those vegetables give you a bit of texture to the dish, like a bit of a crunch. Now the next step to this process is taking our meat and we're going to fill it or, or fill our dough, our disc, uh, with the meat. Now before we start that filling process, what you need to do is you want to take a disc. Now notice that they're big in size and we're going to cut it in half. So you want to take your knife and slide it down the center of the disc and now you have two halves. And it's okay if they're not fully even, just try to do your best. Now to what take I'm gonna my meat, I have a measuring spoon that's about a tablespoon, which is a good amount uh, that you can put inside of this disc. Now if you want to add a bit more, you can, but just be very cautious when you're filling your empanada dough uh, because you don't want to overfill it. Now the reason, there's a couple reasons why you don't want to overfill it. The first one is, for one, because it makes it difficult to close. Keep in mind that we're going to close this empanada half shape onto itself. So you want to crimp the edges of the empanada dough all the way until the, the empanada dough is fully enclosed. Now once you've done that, you'll, you have an empanada that is half moon shaped or almost, almost it'll look like this, a bit triangular. I mentioned you don't want to overfill your dough, but you definitely want to be generous. Don't be cheap now with that filling. All right, so the next part is to cut this so that you have a nice round or half moon shaped edge. I have a cookie cutter and that's what I use to create that nice round shape. After you have cut that nice exterior, you want to take your fork and you want to crimp the edges down. Now this is to guarantee that there's a seal between your empanada uh, dough and we can put that and set it aside. Now comes the frying stage. Heat up the oil first and then once the oil is hot enough we're going to uh, fry the empanadas. Make sure to use caution when you are frying. Now that the empanadas are done it is time to serve. This chicken empanada, you can see the chicken chunks, the peppers, a bit of the onion, 
I mean, it just all comes together. It's so pretty to see all these colors inside, as well as the this nice exterior crust on the outside, and it's nice and golden brown. What I have here, um, you can accompany your chicken empanadas either as is, or you create a sauce uh, to go with it. This one here happens to be um, a sauce that has a bit of heat to it, um, which I think is a nice combination. But, um, oh my gosh, let's try this out. I'm telling you, you guys are gonna love this. It's so good. I'm glad I shared this recipe with you. Um, I have been asked for many years by many people, hey, share with me what you put in those chicken and bananas. And I, um, and I have, and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it uh, because this is a really good recipe. Mm. You hear that crunch? So good. So good. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Until next time, it's Cha Cha. This is my kitchen. Let's do this thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do this. Bananas, chicken and bananas. Chicken, 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 chicken. All right, enough. <laughs>